Good morning. How are you today? Cool. Well, how are you? I am all right. Miss Carla back in the building. Wow. Yes, it has it has been a good minute. It's been a good minute, but it has been a good minute for you and your family. Let's catch everybody up on on what happened with you and your family about a year ago, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, it's going on two years. A few years? My fault. Two years. Two years? All right, so go ahead and catch everybody up about what happened and what's the process of what's going on now. In August of 2020, my mom was murdered in Birmingham, Alabama. And since then, we have found out that her murderer is going on trial October 17th, if I'm not mistaken. They're they're trying to tell us about some plea bargain that they might offer them, and I'm kind of concerned about that. But other than that, that's pretty much all that's going on. All right. Great. So, of course, you're, uh, of course, what happened, uh, my guy, if I'm not mistaken, I think his name is Orzel Johnson. Yes, sir. He was the one that uh, that noticed your mother on the side of the road. He was the one that uh, called the police. And unfortunately, that's when they came over and noticed that your mother was noticed that your mother has was deceased. In the article that we that I came across a while ago, they caught the guy that was not that far from that wasn't that far from the area, of the from the scene. Yes, they caught him one exit and down, and he was boasting uh, about how he had killed her. Now, this this was just a random stranger. He was was he in the car? I don't even think he was in the car. No, he was walking down I twenty fifty nine at three o'clock in the morning. And it was pitch black out, and my mom thought she came up on him all of a sudden, and she thought she might have accidentally hit him. She wanted to make sure he was okay, and when she got out to check on him, that's when he attacked her. Again, my condolences still goes out to you and your family. It's been a couple of years. How have you and your How have you and your father been maintaining since? My dad is, he's doing all right. He's, at, my kids are living with him, taking care of him as they are taking care of him. They're just basically taking care of each other. I have stopped truck driving, tried to find any kind of work elsewhere because I just find I can't really be in a truck anymore. And so it's led me to do landscaping, construction, fences. I'm just been putting myself out there for any kind of handyman task that just requires common sense and maybe a hammer. Your mother was your big influencer of getting into the truck. And now that she had lost her life doing what she loved, that, that put it a profound effect on you getting back into the truck. Did you try at one point to get into the truck? And if so, how did that affect you while you was in it? I did try, and I would have to go through that area, and it just, it was almost a complete mental breakdown, and then I actually got locked out of my truck, just stopping on the side of the road, not far from there, and it was total panic mode. I spent 45 minutes trying to break back into my truck. I actually wound up busting out the window and driving my truck all the way back to Huntsville and turning it in and walking away from it. That, I know that I know that had to be had to be in, in a scary experience being locked out your truck on the side of the road and you're panicking and not sure what's was going to happen next. Miles of, yeah, within 10 miles of where she was murdered. Wow. Ooh, Carla, again, like I said, my, my, my condolences and prayers is out to you. I know this is, I know this is real, real painful for you. Now that the trial is coming up, does that bring back, does that bring back feelings of everything now that the trial is coming up? And why did it take so long 
And I guess my last question is, what plea deal is we talking about here? I don't know why it took so long. All I know is that the prison system's overrun as it is. And sorry about that. a lot of people have been walking free, even on murder charges, just because there's really not room for them. And I really don't know what's behind that. But what they're offering is if he admits to what he did, they're going to, my understanding is they're going to offer him 20 years to life. And he has to do at least 20 years in order to get parole. So he, so at the time of the, at the time of the incident, did, did they say something to the fact that he was going to plead insanity? They said that he was going to plead insanity. However, they had a psychologist wait him and found out that he was smarter than everyone than he let on. Okay, okay. Of course, you're going to be there for the trial if they're if they if they're going to if they're going to do a if they're going to do a plea deal. I'm sure the lawyers is keeping you keeping you up on what's going on. To you, you feel some kind of way about that plea deal. What do you feel about that? I really don't. Uh, I don't want him just to get away with what he did. But years, uh, that would actually be acceptable because of how this world is changing. In twenty years, he'll come out and he, he won't recognize society, and he'll be almost seventy years old. And so maybe he, that instinct to harm people will have diminished by then. I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I well, think I would look. I, I would look at it for an eye, bro. You took something from me. I need your life, man. You took something precious from me that, that I would never get back. And the way you and the way you took her from me. I, I need some type of retribution. Right? I don't need you to be sitting up in jail or in prison every day. I understand people be like, well, they're going to be sitting there every day reflecting back on what they did wrong and not being part of society. But with the boom of TikTok and all these, and all these other craziness that's going on, I see guys in jail with cell phones having a good old time. Like barbecuing on the on the stairs with a literal cell phone and an account, bro. How is that possible? So you in jail for murder, but you over there having a good old time, though. And I don't think I can. I don't think I could stomach that. I, I would need. I would need retribution. That I guess that's just me. I believe in a higher power. And that higher power is God, and God says vengeance will be his, and he's a lot more creative than I ever could be. And so I'm going to just place this one in his hands. I got you. I got and you. And that's the only thing I can do. All right. For myself, I've got to just uh, forgive and let things go for myself. I got you. I got you. Carla, when is the, uh, so I guess we'll all find out at the trial then whether he going to take the deal or it's going to actually go to trial, right? Yes, sir. When is the trial? Um, October 17th was my understanding. October 17th. It is two years and October 17th. Almost going on three years, man. The Man. Yeah, August 19th of 2020. Wow. Carla, thank you very much for coming back on the Lockout Man podcast show where everybody know that the best conversation starts here on the Lockout Man podcast show. Thank you for keeping us updated. Continue to keep us updated and much, much love to you, Carla. Thank you very much. You, and if I have any more information, I will definitely. Not a problem. Thank you, ma'am. And you have a beautiful, blessed day. And hopefully, maybe you'll give trucking one more shot. But I totally understand your feelings on it now. Maybe once he's in prison, maybe I'll feel more comfortable out on the road. There you go. There you go. All right, ma'am. Take it easy. Stay safe. And I'll talk to you later. Yes, sir. Thank you. You're very welcome. There's something in the air 
back tonight Got a feeling coming over me I swear that this is that place to be In the water, in the, the water In the water 